So hello and welcome to my presentation about the sociology of sexuality where I will be talking about how sex and sexuality is incorporated in society and how sociology researches sex and so and sexuality. First I will be talking about how sociology views and how it defines sexuality. Well sociology defines it or views it as a person's capacity for sexual feelings which include the sexual attitudes and sexual experiences of a person. Uh, some examples of sexuality can be heterosexuality or homosexuality. Heterosexuality being when a person is attracted to a person of opposite gender and homosexuality being a term that defines a person who is attracted to a person of the same gender. And uh, I just now mentioned gender. Gender is also a term in that is made up in sociology which defines some cultural meanings that are attached to being masculine or feminine. Uh, what that means basically we do have some objects or traditions in our societies and culture which are given definitions of either masculine or feminine such as that uh, skirts for example are feminine and uh, suits are masculine those traits are what define gender so uh, we have now nowadays a lot more people defining as other genders because gender is on a spectrum from more masculine to feminine and there's all these things in between so now we can see some other terms such as cisgendered people cisgendered people are people who define them uh, who define their gender based on the sex they were born as for example i am i would then be a cisgendered person because i define myself as a man by gender because I, my sex is male but some people can uh, maybe be transgender which are people who are uh, who are defining themselves by gender as a gender that is different from the one they were bo born as for example I would be transgendered if my gender was female because then my sex would be uh, different from my gender and we should not confuse transgender people with transsexual people. Transsexual people are people who undergo the whole sex change. Uh, transgender people often just change their appearance and attitudes, but uh, transsexual people uh, undergo whole sex changes. And sex is actually something that is uh, related to bio biology and not at all to sociology because sex are the biological traits of humans such as the genitalia or the chromosomes. For example, we know that females have two X chromosomes and males have X and Y chromosome. But uh, they, all these terms are uh, made up by sociology not that long ago it was it wasn't always like that history wasn't always researching sexuality and it wasn't always such a big part of our culture uh, for example all all before uh, in the times of primeval man uh, sex wasn't a big part of culture and uh, artistic forms it, there it was just a strong man needed to find a woman who was right to bear his children who was uh, who had the right uh, who had the right traits for being able to bear his children to bear strong children to uh, have strong families to survive the longest to pr preserve humanity and then as uh, these uh, old uh, people had uh, sex they uh, societies gathered and as societies gathered also cultures were being made and in these cultures we can see that uh, sexuality began incorporate became incorporated in uh, their culture we know we can uh, guess that they had some sexual preferences and sexual uh, and uh, rituals that are related to sexuality for example in the ancient mesopotamian societies we know that prostitutes prostitution was present we know that adultery was being punished it was uh, sex was also related to a religious uh, religious religious uh, things as for example uh, people had sex with the priestesses of the goddess Ishtar because they believed that it would uh, bring the goddess happiness 
and then uh, ancient civilizations with uh, the most important cultures for today, such as the ancient Greece. We know them as some uh, maniacs who were having sex all the time, because uh, we know that uh, these old uh, Greece men, which were called the Erastes, had wives, they had slaves, and they also often had uh, prostitutes, which were called the Heterai. They were uh, here as also psychological support. It was all a very high-valued position in life to be a prostitute, such uh, to be a prostitute because they were educated women who earned a lot of money through they, their sexual requests. And these uh, old men, Erastes, they had sex with these prostitutes, their wives, and also younger men, which were called the Eromenos. Eromenos were uh, teenage or adolescent men in their eight, uh, who were about 18 years old, who were seen as, as a very uh, artistic thing in ancient Greece. Their bodies were seen as something that is very beautiful, and these ancient Greeks also uh, valued the phallus symbol, the symbol of the penis, because they believed it was the superior sexual organ. And also these relationship between Erastes and Eromenos, these uh, men and younger men, was called a pederasty. So we can see that homosexuality was also included in these ancient societies and cultures. And these ancient people also had opinions about other cultures. For example, Plato, uh, the Greek philosopher, he also said that uh, Etruscans, the ancient Etruscans, were immoral for their sexual practices. So we can see that uh, their opinions, they also had opinions on sexuality, and sex was and sexuality was a big part of their culture in philosophy, in art, and in science. And also, for example, we have the ancient Indians, uh, the ancient Indian civilizations who were having sex as this thing, as this thing which was deeply spiritually connected with them. They, had, they also researched sexuality in art and in their sciences. And we also have some literature, example, literature examples from that time, such the most famous being the Kama Sutra, which is basically a book about sex tips, essentially. But then you know Judaism and Catholicism came, which uh, have the most influence on today's uh, Western cultures and societies. And uh, basically they believe that God said that we cannot have sex before marriage and that we cannot have sex with people of the same sex as us or else we will go to hell. And now we can see that it is very influential on uh, today's societies where people became very conservative and uh, they, had, they weren't really researching sexuality and sex, but they uh, just were listening to these religious texts and... Uh, religious organizations but then in the 20th century a man named Sigmund Freud came which is probably the most influential person in the fields of psychology and also sexology he is the man that started the research of sex in today's societies he is so important because never no one really wanted no one really came to the, came up with the idea to research uh, sexuality and sex he is the one that started it, it all. He had a lot of his theories. For example, the one that uh, we are sexual beings all throughout our life. We crave sexual desires uh, from the moment we are born. Or for example, that our sexuality is influenced by some outside sources when we are children. So for example, if someone would to came up as a homosexual later in life, that means that he was influenced by some outside factors when he was a kid. He also defined the word libido as sexual drive. But, you know, uh, he wasn't very accurate. A lot of his theories were disproven as uh, being wrong. But he is still a very, very important be because if there wasn't, for, if it wasn't for him, uh, we don't know where we would be today uh, regarding our research into sex, uh, se sexuality and sex. But then in, uh, a bit later, a man named Alfred, Alfred Kinsey, who was a 
zoologist and a biologist who was uh, researching uh, wasps but then he probably thought to himself that uh, sex is a lot cooler so he began researching sex and why he is important is because he also came up with his own theories he mostly is famous for liberal liberalizing the female sexuality and also debunking myths such that uh, homosexuality is a medical uh, case that is n in need of medical attention so he debunked the myth that uh, homosexuals were actually sick people that it was a mental illness and he also for example came up with his own scale of sexuality he said that we can be on a spectrum of sexuality of heterosexuality and homosexuality that we cannot be just exclusively heterosexual or homosexual that we can be just a little bit gay or maybe more and uh, this all le his research led up to the sexual revolution of the 60s and 70s where it came to the normalization of nudity sexuality uh, pornography contraception and the overall widespread attention that was given to the talk about sex and sexuality which all led to people being a lot more comfortable with their with them coming out as homosexuals or them having different genders this is the main these are the main events that led us to the point where we are today and i mentioned that all these terms are newer terms such as homosexuality homosexuality or heterosexuality uh, for example the word homosexuality was invented in the 1800s in the victorian uh, era of england where it uh, they made up the word so uh, the word homosexual so they would stop aristocrats from having uh, sexual intercourse with other male aristocrats because they believe that it was uh, it wasn't so reputable to do that and because of that they also came up with the term heterosexual the the homosexuality and heterosexuality weren't so defined in the past people were just having sex with whoever they wanted but you know then uh, they began to label uh, all these terms for having sexual intercourse with same sex people with other uh, with uh, opposite sex people so that people became, became became a lot less confident with who they were because they were labeled as someone else so they uh, felt excluded so because of these events people now became uh, much more comfortable with their sexualities and who knows maybe who knows how the research of sexuality and sex will go into the future maybe our views will differ completely in the future uh, thank you for your attention and goodbye